context. The human rights of migrant populations are in jeopardy across the world right now, and too many cities are closing their doors. Our world is veering dangerously away from the norms of human dignity. The nativist mentality that once characterized the political fringe has gone mainstream, legitimizing an open racism not seen since the middle of the 20th century to protect ourselves from infestation. The very language of a caravan is uh, derailing us. These are individuals, not a mass, humans, not aliens, each with stories and traumas that need to be heard, each bearing rights that need to be protected. Teddy and I live and work at the border between Tijuana and San Diego, the main site of arrival for people escaping Central American violence, poverty, and the impacts of climate change. Here, geopolitics is intensely local. Fear of deportation has produced unprecedented anxiety in the immigrant communities of San Diego County. Men and women who have lived and worked and contributed in countless ways to their communities in the US are enduring uh, terrorizing threats of the proverbial knock at the door. There are countless stories of egregious human rights violations, mass sweeps, entry and seizure without warrant, extra legal deportation, which because of the proximity of the wall can take just a matter of minutes, detention of minors in adult facilities, the separation of migrant children from their parents. It is particularly devastating to witness the emotional impact right now on children, their fear, and the inevitable psychic internalization of their social and moral marginality. In this radical context, the prototypes for Trump's beautiful wall are a physicalization of hatred, manifesting in concrete or steel or whatever, the politics of fear that is gripping the world. The political equator is a visualization that links border regions and activist practices across the world. We trace an imaginary line between the 30 to 38 degrees north parallel from the San Diego-Tijuana border the main funnel of migration from Latin America into the United States to the Strait of Gibraltar and the Mediterranean, the main route of immigrants and refugees from North Africa across fortress Europe to the Israeli-Palestinian border that divides the Middle East and to India, Kashmir, to North and South Korea. This is the political equator. Fona and I believe that the convergence of geopolitical borders, climate justice, and size of poverty is a challenge of our time. Sorry, I, I have to return this, sorry. It's a danger of, um, I'm sorry, the, 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 this, I shouldn't have touched it, it's a video that, <laughs> <laughs> so if you can indulge in seeing the political equator again. <laughs> For us, it's a, it's a conceptual armature to, to actually connect global conflict with our very, very precise uh, locality. I should leave that machine there. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so we left it uh, at the urgency really to uh, see the convergence, to really uh, confront and engage the convergence of geopolitical borders, climate justice, and size of poverty. So from the political equator, um, we arrive to the continental border between the United States and Mexico. This jurisdictional line bisects the eight main watershed systems shared by both countries, a physical disruption that harms populations on both sides. We have been collecting aerial images that convey precise moments of collision between natural and political systems along the entire trajectory of the border. We have many of them, but these are really the most dramatic. For us, these are the images of broken nature. A new or thickened wall that closes these gaps will only accelerate the damage. We challenge the, le the legitimacy of a rationalist 19th century line imposed onto complex systems and want to provoke a more ecological way of thinking about border spaces a more restorative idea of regional interdependence. Mexus presents the US-Mexico border as a region rather than as a line. 
visualizing the shared cross-border social and environmental flows framed by the binational watershed systems. Unwalling this thick system of interdependencies is essential for the coexistence of divided communities. Mexus reveals what walls cannot stop. Eight watersheds, 11 indigenous tribes, protected lands, croplands, 28 urban crossings, 15 million people, and beyond. Mexus is our laboratory for political and urban creativity, reimagining the jurisdictional line as a tissue of social and spatial ecologies and seeking more expansive ideas of citizenship beyond the nation state. As we zoom into the westernmost corner of Mexus, we arrive in the San Diego Tijuana, uh, the San Diego Tijuana River watershed. 25% is in San Diego, 75% in Tijuana. As we get closer still, we arrive at a particular juncture where an important finger of the watershed, the Laurelis Canyon in Tijuana, spills across the jurisdictional wall and collides with a precious estuary in San Diego, a very important environmental zone. The Laurelis Canyon is home to an informal settlement of 85,000 people and sits high above the estuary. The wall exerts a special kind of havoc here. In this part of the world, water flows from south to north. Because of the proximity of the slum and the estuary, this means that wastewater from the slum flows northbound, carrying tons of trash and sediment into the estuary with each rainy season, harming public health on both sides. The newest section of the border wall with its concrete dams and drains has accelerated this process. The wall, in fact, is a self-inflicted wound, an infrastructure of insecurity. At this very site a few years ago, we worked with Homeland Security to transform a border drain into an official port of entry for 24 hours. With passports in hand, 300 of us crossed the border drain southbound from the estuary in San Diego into the Laurelis Canyon in Tijuana. Now, Homeland Security agreed to this performance, since we're just harmless artists, but they requested that Mexican immigration wait for us at the south end of the drain. As they stamped our passports in this liminal space between estuary and slum, in a mouth of the wall, as the sewage passed, passed us by, the contradictions came alive between national security and regional environmental protection. For us, this animated a profound question. Can citizenship be organized around the shared interests and values in communities divided by a wall, rather than by nationalism and identitarian politics? We facilitated the border drain crossing performance to raise a public awareness of this critical juncture and to reopen the channel of communication between municipalities in San Diego and Tijuana. We are now summoning an unprecedented cross-border coalition of state, municipal governments, communities, and universities to develop a cross-border environmental conservancy that links the U.S. history and the Mexican slum into a single continuous political, social, and ecological zone like a green cross-border stitch. We're bundling and underdeveloped parcels in the slum. Each of these fragments of land will be co-curated by cross-sector coalitions to mobilize resources and curate conservation programming. To initiate this, we designed the UCSD community stations as an instrument of community engagement and equitable regional development. The community stations link the University of California, San Diego, our campus, with neighborhoods across the border region, sharing resources and knowledges to increase community capacity for political action. The community stations are a network of public spaces in underserved immigrant communities where teaching and research and urban intervention are done collaboratively between university and community. Each community station is a partnership with an embedded grassroots organization, and together we develop long-term urban projects. And we've come to discover that the university's social capital, programmatic capacity, and economic power become leverage for our community partners as they develop their own infrastructure, housing, public space, and so on. Universities and communities can be co-developers of a more just city and a more just border region. The first community station is located in Southeast San Diego in the immigrant community of Encanto, and it is surrounded by six public schools. Earthlab 
is a collaboration with an NGO, Groundwork San Diego, where we research K-12 environmental literacy, participatory climate action through community engagement. The local school district gave us a four-acre vacant parcel, which we are transforming into an open-air climate action park. It is designed with energy, food, and water exhibits for hands-on experiential learning to enhance the traditional classroom science and humanities curriculum. Our claim is that while new energy technologies are essential today, they must be paired with new pedagogies and new forms of community engagement to transform norms and behaviors. In fact, we must empower youth in underserved neighborhoods to be agents of climate action. The UCSD uh, Casa Station is located in the border neighborhood of San Isidro. With a nonprofit organization, Casa Familiar, we research social justice in the city. We research affordable housing, public space, immigration, and cross-border citizenship. Our physical station here manifests a strategic relationship between social housing and public space that educates. We began construction of this project two months ago where neighborhood youth access higher education through arts and cultural spaces and activities. Immigrant neighborhoods we maintain are sites of cultural productivity and the laboratories for new civic infrastructure. In our final community station across the border in Tijuana is located in the informal settlements of Laureles Canyon that Fona mentioned earlier. With the NGO Divina Providencia, we research informal urbanization, raise awareness of cross-border environmental assets, and cultivate regional interdependence and empathy. The station is designed as a flexible space for collaborative education and community development. We believe that children are the cross-border citizens of the future. Education opens hearts and minds, an education that teaches empathy, and a more expansive idea of well-being, that the survival of the individual depends on the health of the collective. Thank you. Thank you.